Chapter 8 When Cole's advance brought him within ten feet of the spirit bear, he made his move. He flung the spear with his strength, fully intending to kill. A blur of white motion deflected the shaft down into the grass as the bear lunged. Cole never even had time to raise the knife before the bear was on him, clubbing him down with a powerful blow. Cole's body folded and collapsed to the ground. Before he could roll away, another crushing paw shoved his face into the dirt. His jaw struck a rock. Rolling over, then scrambling to his feet, Cole ran toward the trees, but they offered no protection. The bear was on him again, dragging him down, its breath rotten. Cole gripped the knife with his left hand and clawed with his right at some long stalks of Devil's Club, anything to pull himself away from the raking claws of the bear. With each desperate grab, hundreds of tiny thistles pierced his fingers. He ignored the thistles as the bear sank its teeth into his thigh, lifting him up like a rag doll. Cole's stomach churned and he swung the knife wildly. Each time he stabbed the bear, its powerful jaws clamped harder. Cole felt his pelvis crack. His body went weak and the knife slipped from his hand. The bear dropped him to the ground and pawed at his chest as if raking leaves. Sharp claws ripped flesh from each swipe. Cole raised his right arm to ward off the attack and teeth clamped onto his forearm. Then everything seemed to happen in slow motion. He felt his body flop back and forth, the bear swinging him by the arm. Cole pounded the bear's face with his fist, but nothing stopped the savage attack. In desperation, he grabbed the bear's neck to free his arm from the crushing jaws. A handful of white hair pulled loose. Cole heard the loud crack of bones breaking his forearm, then the bear dropped him with a grunt. Cole cowered to the ground, pain piercing his shoulder. All feeling in his right arm had disappeared. As the bear toward, turned toward him again, Cole screamed, No! No more! But his words came out as Cole's grunts. He collapsed onto his back. As if finishing its attack, the spirit bear placed its huge paws on Cole's chest and gave a single heart shove. Air exploded from Cole's lungs. Ribs snapped. Mouth wide open, Cole gasped but could not catch. His breath. The spirit bear towered over him, its rank breath warm. Cole struggled to move his arms and his legs, anything to escape the white monster. But his body refused to move. Waves of nauseating pain flooded through him. Each time he gasped, pain gripped his chest and the thick, sweet taste of blood filled his mouth. For an eternity, the bear remained standing over Cole in the chilling rain. Finally, it drew in a deep breath, raised its massive head, and stepped casually to the side. With a lazy shuffle, it turned away and wandered down the shoreline. For long minutes, the world stood still. Gasping for air, Cole tried to roll to his side, but the pain tore at his hip and chest. As air gradually seeped back into his lungs, he strained to raise his right arm, but his arm, like a broken branch in the grass, refused to move. The only movements Cole could make were with his left arm and his head. The incessant rain tickled his cheeks and mixed with the blood from his mouth, dripping red by the time it hit the ground. Cole closed his eyes. Was he dying? Every movement, every breath tortured him. The blood seeping into his throat choked him. He coughed and pain ripped at his chest. His stomach churned and the world threatened to turn black. Cole resolved never to cough again. He would drown first. He gazed upward and found himself under the branches of a tree in full view of the bay. The lumpy ground hurt. Barely ten feet away, seagulls strutted around, squawking, flapping their skinny wings and picking at something in the grass. Cole stared down at his chest. The bear's claws had raked him open. His shredded shirt exposed gashes with long strips of flesh missing. One of the gulls squawked as it stole a stingy piece of meat and skin from another gull. Cole realized the gulls were fighting over bits of his own torn flesh. He tried to shout and wave at them, but all that managed was a lame flopping of his left hand. A dull, angry grunt caught in his throat. The gull shied a few feet, then returned to picking through the grass. In a rage, Cole tried to spit at them. The bloody mucus ran down his chin and dripped on his shoulder. Cole licked his numb lips, but the pain made him stop. He had bitten his tongue when the bear slammed his face into the ground. 
He watched as one by one the gulls took to the air. They circled out over the bay in search of better pickings. Cole glared at them. The gluttonous seagulls had brazenly eaten chunks torn from his chest and were now onto something else. A herring or a clam? What luck, Cole thought, to end up on an island with a stupid bear that didn't have brains enough to run away. And the seagulls? He hoped they choked to death. What pea brains eating his ripped flesh as indifferently as they would bits of fish. They treated him like any other animal. Cole wanted to scream. Hey, look at me. I'm Cole Matthews. I'm better than you. But all he could manage was a grunt. If only he'd had a gun. The squawking of the gulls over the bay echoed like hollow laughter. They were laughing at him, Cole thought. He wished he had never come to this island. But he was here. Nothing could change that. He was trapped on a godforsaken island, alone, and mauled within an inch of his life by a white monster bear. Cole tried to gather his wits. The mauling didn't make sense. In the past, everything had always been afraid of him. Why wasn't this bear scared? A bear with half a brain would have turned tail and run. Instead, this dumb animal had attacked. Now it wandered out in the woods somewhere the mauling little more than an inconvenience to its mourning. Cole glanced down and spotted the knife blade lying by his side. It satisfied him to see the spirit bear's blood on the blade tip. Grimacing, he raised his left hand to wipe his own blood from his lips. He saw his fist tightly gripped the clump of white matted hair he had ripped off the bear. The sight of the hair caused him to shudder. Cole tensed his arms to throw away the stark reminder of its of his mauling, but passed, but paused. Instead, he worked his hand to his side and stuffed the hair in his pants pocket. If he lived through this, he would have something to brag about. He could prove he had fought a bear. The hair gave Cole a sense of power. No bear willingly would give up a big clump of hair. Cole struggled to shift his position on the uneven ground, but stiffness had set in his joints like hardened cement. He couldn't roll to either side. If only he could use both arms. Struggling, he raised his head for a better look at his right arm. It laid mangled and useless. All he could see of his forearm was ripped shirt and ragged torn flesh. A bloody white bone jutted out near his elbow like a broken stick. His fingers looked artificial, pale and puffy from grabbing the devil's club. They faced the wrong direction. The only sensation he had had from his arm was a throbbing burn in his shoulder. The sight of his arm frightened Cole. He drew in a deep breath, but again pain stabbed at his chest, warning him. He returned to shallow, tentative breaths, drawing air past his lips as if he were sipping from a straw. Cole grimaced and struggled to raise his right knee, but he couldn't. The crushing bite to his thigh had rendered his leg lifeless. He relaxed his neck to catch his breath. Sweat stung his eyes, and still it rained, cold rain, soaking into everything it touched. A breeze swayed the branches overhead. Cole's gaze wandered in a big circle around him. All of the landscape, the air, the trees, the animals, the water, the rain, all seemed to be a part of something bigger. They moved in harmony, bending and flowing, twisting and breathing as if connected. But Cole felt alone and apart. His soaked clothes chilled his bones. The hard ground pushed at his wounded body like a big hand shoving him away. No, Cole thought. He was not a part of this place. He should not be here. It was not his choice to lie dying on a remote island alone, unable to move. This place held him. Prisoner, more securely than any jail cell. Here he was powerless. He could not keep warm or find food. His place was wearing dry clothes in a safe, warm room, sleeping and eating without a care in the world. His place was having other people worry about him. His place was being in control. That was his place. Haunting thoughts pried at Cole's mind. Night would come sooner or later, and it more, and with it, more rain and cold. What would happen when the last bit of warmth seeped from his body? What was death like? Did it hurt? Did it come fast like lightning from the sky or a blow from the spirit bear? 
Did death sneak around like a stinking seagull, trying to snatch life from a body like meat chunks from a rotting carcass? Or did life just flicker out like a dim candle? Cole's tortured thoughts slowly gave way to an even worse possibility. What if death didn't happen right away? Would seagulls land on him and peck bits of warm meat from his body when he could no longer fight back? And where was the bear? Waves of pain racked Cole's body. With each agonizing wave, he bit at his lip and whimpered, trying not to cry out. All of his life, he had been haunted by nightmares of helplessness. Some nights he dreamed he was drowning, unable to find the surface. Some nights he dreamed of fists raining down on him like giant hail. Worse yet were the dreams he had of being alone and no one caring about him. Now he was living his worst nightmare. Cole flopped his head to the side and spotted a small caterpillar inching over a rotten branch. He reached out with his finger and crushed it. That would teach it not to crawl so close. The sweet taste of blood kept seeping into Cole's mouth, forcing him to swallow. His stomach cramped. Wincing, he wiped at his mouth with his left hand, then stared at the glistening red on his knuckles. It reminded him of the bear's blood on the knife beside him. It also looked like the blood he had seen on the sidewalk after beating up Peter. The blood looked identical. This thought drifted about in his head but failed to gain meaning. Blood might look the same, but Peter was a loser and a jerk. Cole dropped his hand to the grass. The bear was a stupid lumbering moron. Cole's stomach churned and cramped harder. A sour bile taste stung his throat. He dared not throw up, but he felt the urge coming like a freight train and he couldn't get off the tracks. Suddenly he convulsed and vomited. Instant pain attacked his chest and the world swam in circles. Again and again the spasms came and Cole flopped his head sideways to keep from choking. He tried to stop throwing up but couldn't. Black patches danced across his vision. Then he lost consciousness. Hours later Cole awoke feeling weak and confused. His thoughts drifted above him like restless air moving over the bay. The stink of vomit and the salty smell of rotting seaweed hung in the air, and overhead a leaf drifted down in slow motion as if arriving from outer space. Cole forced his head to the side and tried to focus. Vomit covered the ground beside his head. He could see chunks of the fish he had eaten. Beyond, he could see the mouth of the bay where the ocean disappeared into the dull, rain-misted sky. Cole damned the rocks, the rain, and the endless ocean. What a fool he had been to come here instead of going to jail. At least in jail, he would have been in the safety and the comfort of a cell. He would have been in control. He, here, he was powerless. Nobody to control, nobody to blame. Every action worked against him and hurt him. A bitter loneliness swept over Cole as tears clouded his vision. He felt so small here puked up on rotten, remote, forgotten shore and left to die. Was this how the world was going to get rid of him?